Hello and welcome to the new video. Today is going to be a big, big video. We are not going to talk that much about confidence and inner game, but today we are more so going to go over all the system that I am using, the whole system, to let you guys understand how to fill your life with girls. So uh, let's get into the big video about getting the big rock star sex life. Why did I make this video? Well, um, most people don't like to talk that much about inner game stuff, but um, I'm not going to talk about confidence that much in this video. But the bare minimum is that having good inner game, having great confidence, believing in yourself and trusting your abilities is what's going to allow you to date better girls, okay? Um, basically, having a great inner game, it is what gets you quality girls. It's what gets you not fat, ugly, mean and annoying girlfriends. And you might be able to sleep with so many girls. If all the girls you're sleeping with are annoying, they don't really fit your criteria, you're not really that attracted to them, in the long run, you're going to feel bad about it. So that's pretty much it for the confidence and inner game talk. I know what you guys want to see are how do I do this? How do I get from point A to point B? What's the uh, plan that I can follow to get to what I want? What are the steps? Today, we are going to talk about plans and steps. So I made this big video so that you have a big overall plan of how you must go about meeting women, okay? Um, I'm not going to go into too much details. I'm going to go over everything. So it all makes sense together. What is in this video? What can you expect? Well, a full rundown of how I meet girls and how I get laid consistently. Okay, right now there is a corona, so I don't go out that much. Um, I'm in my house in France. We are under lockdown for now. But I will base this video on the lifestyle I had when I was able to sleep with four to five new girls a week. Because um, I'm not a big fan of big numbers, but numbers do convince. And so for those who care, so far I slept with over 200 girls. Um, to be honest, I don't really have uh, an exact idea of my number because I stopped counting after 120 because I realized that I was just chasing the big number instead of chasing the improvement. And what you want to do is actually to chase the improvement because if you're able to sleep with girls who are not that attractive, that's one thing, that's great. But eventually it gets boring and eventually you will want to get better, higher quality girls. So unlike some other coaches, um, those are real numbers, okay? That roughly means uh, one girl a week, every week for four years. And I started learning success with women actually um, exercising and actually going out a lot four years ago. So that makes sense. So as I started learning the success uh, with women thing, I started to implement a system to consistently get girls, okay? Because you might have heard about cold approach, but you can't get good at this and you can't consistently get new girls just by going out on the streets, going out to clubs and meeting women. Yes, you can do that, but there are better and more efficient ways to do it. So... The system I'm going to propose you guys is a mix of all of my experiences, how I learned success with women, how I still had a life um, beside, and how I got good at this while making it kind of automatic, okay? Because you will, we are going to see that very soon. In the end, it's just about having a system, having a funnel, and filling that funnel with girls that you like. So yeah, to be fully honest with you, in the last six months, I think I slept with less than 10 different girls because it's Corona, because we're under lockdown. But as I said, after a while, you're chasing quality rather than quantity. But at the beginning, if you want to chase quantity, this system works wonders. What else can you expect from this video? Well, how to meet girls from day game, from night game, from online dating apps, and from your social circle. You will also see how I text girls once I get their contact after a first meetup. Um, you will see how I handle dates that lead to sex, not pointless dates that lead to nothing. 
You will see how after this, I get second dates that lead to a relationship, meaningful relationship, hopefully. But um, the whole friends with benefit thing works as well. Because we're going to see this, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, and also how to do all of this, learn success with women and still have a life, um, have other hobbies, have friends, have a family, have a job, which is very important. So because of the format of this video, it's going to be a pretty long video. I think um, I was doing this video on uh, Zoom group calls. And so far, the last two um, group calls lasted for over two, year, two, two hours. So that's probably going to be a very long video. I'm going to pass over some details that are not too interesting because they are a little bit complex, but you will get uh, the whole framework of how this works. Uh, and the last time I did a PowerPoint, I was in middle school, so don't be too rough with me. Please be gentle. The content is definitely there. What kind of dating life can you expect with this system? First, you will feel powerful, okay? You will never have this feeling of backing down when you see a girl in public and you would like to approach her, but you don't. And then you go back to your house and you're like, oh, if only I was able to go up to girls that I like. Oh my God, I hate myself. Maybe one day I will be able to do this. And I know this feeling sucks. Um, I remember a few years ago, I would be on the subway going to work and I would see a girl who was extremely attractive to me and I would just stare at her and, and, and wondering to myself if only I was able to go up to her. And you know, I was not even staring at her. I was shyly looking in her direction when she was not watching me, watching her. That's terrible for your self-esteem. And yeah, you go, um, you go home after this and you feel bad. With this system, you will be able to feel powerful because now you will actually be able to go up to girls that you like and strike a conversation with them and well, shoot your shots. You will also be able to date multiple women at the same time because you have no obligation of monogamy. If you want to find one girl, your perfect dream girlfriend and get married with her, you can, but you don't have to. And this system will give you the freedom. So um, in terms of numbers, what can you expect? Well, um, to put things in perspective, the average man sleeps with seven girls in his life. With this system, you will be able to sleep with at least one new girl a week. What does that mean? That's four girls a month. That's 52 girls a year. That's 1,560 girls over the course of 30 years versus the average male who sleeps with seven different women in his life. Put things in perspective. So I'm not telling you that after watching this video, you will go out and sleep with a girl this week, even though you could very well be able to do this if you follow the system. But in any case, you will be able to learn and you will know what to do to maybe after a few weeks of going out, sleeping with one new girl and then sleeping with two girls a week and then sleeping with three girls a week. In the end, it's not very hard to do so. And I really want to emphasize this point. You don't even need to be really good to sleep with at least one girl a week. You just have to follow the proper system and to follow the proper steps. Um, with this system, you will be able to not get led by women anymore. I'm pretty sure that happened to you once. You were in a relationship with a girl and she was kind of, quote unquote, crazy. She was kind of mean and you felt like you were not in control of the relationship. Well, with this system, you will be able to be in control of your relationships simply because if you're with a girl and you're not satisfied by the relationship, you will have the options, you will have the opportunities and you will have the confidence to know that you can just go to another girl who fits you better. You will be able to meet women effortlessly. You will see the biggest um, difficulty of this system is just to meet new women. Once you put them through the system, once you put the um, enough women through the system, in the end, you will just have, well, a few women, but you will like those women and they will like you back. So your only concern with this system will be to find and meet new girls. And also a little bit of hope from there. It's only up. There is no way down because whatever your dating situation is, this system is so efficient 
that you can only get better results. The system is so efficient and easy uh, to follow that you can only get better results if you follow it. Now, again, um, I'm not just talking out of my ass, okay? I do have results, and there you can see. I'm not showing this to brag. I'm just showing this uh, so you can see that it's actually possible to get results with this system. This is the kind of lovely shit that I wake up to every day. Uh, women trying to please me, women giving me compliments and appreciation, women sending me sexy pictures and videos. Basically, girls that I like, who like me back and who want to please me. You can get the same. Now, the thing is that that's really funny. If someone told me I could wake up to multiple texts like that 10 years ago, I would not have believed that person. I used to be extremely shy. And things change. Things definitely can change. I'm coming from far, and I know some of you guys are really in a dire situation right now. Don't lose hope, okay? Things change for the better. Again, the point is not to brag, but just to show you that you can get the same results. So let's go and see the complete Rockstar Sex Life Funnel. So it's a system in four steps, okay? First, you are going to acquire new leads. You're going to go up to new girls in a few different ways that we are going to see right after. Then you will transition to a second meetup, which is going to be the first date. And then if everything goes well, you will be able to have sex and to then lead those girls to a relationship. Now, when I say relationship, it means that it's a girl that you will be able to see to add to the rotation of girls that you're already seeing. Because again, you can see only one girl or you can see multiple girls. Seeing multiple girls is really not the hardest part in here. Okay, so for the lead acquisition, we have four boxes, three red boxes, um, because you will meet girls from real life there, and one white box for girls that you meet through online dating. I put those boxes in red because it's girls that you will have the opportunity to sleep with on the day when you will meet them. Now, you can't really sleep with a girl from online dating when you match with her, so you will have to go directly into the transition. But for all the other girls that you meet from real life, you will have the ability to sleep with them when you meet them. Okay, so then you have the transition. Um, if you had sex with them, that's great. The rest is going to be easier. But in any case, you will go through texts. Some guys like to call girls on the phone. Most girls don't respond very well to this. I know that when girls pick up the phone and they talk to you on the phone, they feel way more comfortable about meeting you again. But it's a detail, okay? Most of the time, you will have to text girls, so you'd better know how to effectively text girls. Then you will lead to a date. You will lead to a meetup. Most of the time, again, it's going to be in a public place, okay? Um, for sure, you can invite girls directly to your place on a first date. But again, most of the time, this is not what happens. Most girls are not comfortable with that. And then um, the goal of a first date is to get sex. Because relationships do not start un unless, until you sleep with a girl. If you didn't sleep with her, she's not your girlfriend. She's just an acquaintance or at best a friend. But relationships start once you have sex. Then after this, it's even easier. You just repeat. Go back to texting her to set up a date to have sex with her again or just have a good time with her. And then you can add her to the rotation of girls that you're actually currently seeing or just, well, make her your exclusive girlfriend or get married to this girl. The point is that you have the choice. Does that seem easy enough? Yes, that's because it is. Now, how do we learn this model? Well, I recommend that you take the red boxes one at a time, okay? Um, because if you try to do everything, you will not have a balanced life. It's too much stuff. Your brain will not be able to process all of the informations, all of the reference experiences that you will be getting. Your brain won't be able to process everything. So you're gonna waste your time if you work, but your brain is not going to be able to process the information. Um, and you are going to work on the rest of the model on the steps two, three, and four all the time. 
Now, unless you want to do it like I did and sleep five hours a night to learn everything at the same time, um, this is what I recommend. You can learn everything at the same time, but uh, this is going to be stressful. This is going to be intense. You will not uh, be able to sleep enough. You will not be able to have a healthy lifestyle. You will not be able to be efficient at work. And basically, you will be thinking about girls and getting better with girls all the time. That's really definitely not a healthy lifestyle. But if you have the opportunity to do so, if you really want to get this um, sorted as soon as possible, you can do that. When I learned this, I was going out five, six, seven nights uh, a week out. And basically, my lifestyle was wake up at 3 p.m., uh, take some breakfast, go to exercise and then go to bars and then go to clubs and repeat every day for roughly two two years yeah but uh, i had the uh, opportunity to do that and i um let's say sculpted my lifestyle to allow me to do this so if you can do the same do it but most people won't have the opportunity to do so and most people don't want this lifestyle. So it's all right. The easy way to learn this is to go out two days a week to practice one red box at a time. Um, every time you go out, you make at least three approaches and you are consistent. If you want to go the easy way, your main goal is to be consistent. Now, if you want to go the hardcore way, well, you can go out five days a week. Um, during the afternoon after work, you do a day game. And then at night, you go in clubs, you go in bars, and you do night game. Um, you do that during the week, and on the weekend, you, you do this all day, because on the weekend, you don't have to work. So your whole weekend will be dedicated to meeting new girls and practicing um, social dynamics. Try to get as many approaches in as possible. And if you do this, your brain will be saturated by new information, but at the very least, you will be sure to learn this as fast as possible. Okay, let's get directly into the online dating. So about online dating, most of the heavy lifting is going to be your profile. So seriously, get your first picture right. That's the most important part of online dating. This one thing, your first profile picture. Then make sure your profile doesn't have blurry pictures, okay? Make sure your profile doesn't have selfies. Make sure everything that would look lazy or a matter is taken out of your profile. You will rather want to have a few pictures than a lot of average pictures. You don't want any bad picture. You only want good pictures. Even if you have two, three, four pictures, it's better than eight average pictures. Get your pictures right. And you know the thing with online dating, crafting a great profile is a work in progress, okay? Um, you are probably not going to be able to go out in one afternoon and get the perfect nine pictures for your Tinder profile. But over the course of one year, two years, maybe you will craft the ultimate Tinder profile. You also want to let the girls clearly see your facial and body shapes, okay? You can see the camera right now. Don't take pictures like that. The frame you can see right now is great for a first picture. But you also have to let the girls know what your overall body shape looks like. Your pictures have to show what kind of guy you are. Uh, your pictures have to show what it's like to hang out with you. Basically, before going out with you, when watching your profile, the girl has to know what she's in for. She has to know clearly, as clearly as possible, what she um, can expect from a date with you. And any part of mystery, any part of, oh, what is this guy like? What should I expect from this guy? Any part of wishy-washiness will make the girl uncomfortable. And she, if she's uncomfortable, she's not going to trust you. She's not going to go on a date with you. So that's for your profile. Make it look professional. Show that you put effort into it and show yourself clearly. Show your lifestyle clearly. Of course, it's always better to improve your lifestyle, but today I said we don't talk about lifestyle. So show things clearly in uh, 
appealing to the eye manner. You don't have to be the most handsome, but you have to show clearly what you are about. <clears throat> so now let's talk about the bio. You want to have three paragraphs, okay? Not five words, not 10 paragraphs, just three paragraphs is good enough. You want the tone to be light and fun, okay? You don't want to complain and you don't want to be um, dark and edgy and uh, rebellious in your bio, okay? You don't want to write things like, oh, do you think liking dog is a personality trait? Because if you write that kind of stuff, you come off as butthurt. And girls don't want to go out with butthurt guys. Because the main thing about online dating is that the girl is going to judge you based only on what she sees of you. She's not going to guess anything. She's going to go out with a profile. If your profile doesn't show good things, even if you're a great guy, she's not going to know. She's not going to guess. She's not going to take the risk. So back to the bio, to the three paragraphs. Um, you want the first paragraph to be about something she will like about you. You want the second one to be about something that you look for in a woman. And you want the third one to be something, let's say, fun to open the bio and to give her ideas of things that she could open you with. <clears throat> Again, she has to have a good idea of what it's like to hang out with you. Now, when we text girls on online dating, what do we do? We don't want at all to try to get to know them, okay? Most guys do this. They get into conversations because they saw on the internet, oh, how do I talk to girls on Tinder? And the mainstream advice is to ask her things about herself and try to get to know her through online dating apps. That doesn't work. If you do this, she's going to answer two, three messages, and then she's going to ghost you. Do not try to get to know each other. Now, I have four steps to lead to a date from online dating, and they have proven quite useful um, into leading to a date, but as well useful in making sure you don't fall into a boring conversation that has girls ghost you. So first step, you're going to open her with something that you noticed in her profile to start the conversation. Maybe there is nothing that stands out, okay? Maybe her whole profile is just pictures of her taking selfies with a duck face. If you really have nothing to say, nothing to talk about, just open her with something easy. Don't be lazy. Don't just type hi, but be a little bit less lazy. Um, for example, my go-to opener is Hello Jello or Hola Chica. Very easy, but not as lazy as hi. Now, the second step is going to exchange with her a few messages. The point there is to banter and let her know that you're here to meet someone, okay? No boring conversation. The only conversational topics that you can have in this step are, um, well, let's say questions to figure out if she's actually there to meet someone, what kind of guys she's looking to meet, uh, what can you guys do when you're gonna meet, but everything is related to you guys meeting. We don't give a fuck, for example, about her favorite kind of food, unless you want to have a first date in a restaurant. Now that's valid. We don't care about which university she's going to, unless, well, you care about the distance between you and her. All right, that's great for now. Now the third step, well, my computer is getting crazy. Okay, the third step is going to be pushing for a date. I think we should do this. Push for the idea of a date. Don't lock um, logistics just yet. Just put the idea of a date out there and see how she reacts. She's either going to ghost you, in which case she was not interested, uh, give you an objection, in which case you have to deal with the objection. For example, oh no, I can't go take a coffee with you because I don't like coffee. Then you deal with the objection and you're like, oh, let's get pizza instead. Or she's going to directly say yes. Then the fourth step, you close her. Great. Let's do this next week. Do you have WhatsApp? Let's figure a convenient time. Easy peasy.
Now, the thing is that most girls are not on online apps to actually meet someone, okay? Um, most of them are there because they are bored. The majority of girls on Tinder are not there to meet anyone. Now, do not be upset if some stop and swearing to you. You know, try to really detach your emotions from online dating. Because again, most girls are not there to meet someone, while most guys are actually there to meet someone. So most of the time, um, you're not going to get a positive outcome out of online dating. But that's all right. That's all right. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It doesn't mean your case is hopeless, okay? It just means that you have to understand the rules and play by the rules. Now, it's actually good because you're going to be able to quickly figure out which girl is interested in meeting up with a guy and which girl is not interested in meeting, in meeting up with a guy. If you follow those steps, you will get to the point. And again, if a girl ghosts you because you asked her out, it's not because you did something stupid. It's just because she was not interested in meeting up with you or meeting up with a guy in general. Point is, don't focus on that. Focus on the fact that you noticed she was not down for it and quickly move on to the next girl. Um, you don't need to spend a lot of time texting girls, okay? Some guys feel like she has to be comfortable before meeting you. No. She likes your profile or she doesn't. Maybe you're going to make a mistake when you text her and it's going to kill all the attraction she had for you. But the only thing that's going to make her comfortable is the fact that you're not saying something weird, which in itself is super easy, uh, and that your profile is attractive enough to her and your profile let her know clearly enough what kind of guy you are so she's comfortable with meeting that profile. That's pretty much it for the online dating. Quite easy. Show clearly what kind of guy you are. Don't say something weird. Don't get into boring conversations and figure out quickly which girl is down to meet guys and which girl is just there because she's tindering on the toilet. Now let's talk about day game. Day game means meeting a woman in public places. A few steps there as well. You're gonna start by approaching a woman. You have three ways to do so. First way is going up in a direct manner. You are directly letting her know that you find her attractive and that you want to start a conversation with her. Uh, that's my favorite opener. Example, uh, hey, I saw your style and wow, I really dig your boots. I had to say hi to you. Another example, oh wow, you look really fashionable. Damn, I had to say hi to you. Another example, oh hey, I really like your style. I wanted to say hi to you. Very direct, very basic, very easy. Um, if you're learning success with women and you're quite a beginner, still, this is what I advise you to do most of the time because this is um, very easy. Uh, the delivery is very easy to do. If you want to go more indirect, the delivery is a little bit more complex. But that's the second kind of opener that you can have. You can approach a girl and be indirect. It's basically you starting a conversation without directly telling her that you are interested in her. For example, hey, um, excuse me, do you know how to get to McDonald's? Oh, wow, you really look like you're from here. And then you keep building on that. You started um, asking her something. You started telling her something that's not a compliment, but now you're in a conversation and you keep digging through to get to know her. That's the indirect opener. Now you have the situational opener, which is kind of the same thing as an indirect opener, except that you're going to talk about something that's around you guys. If you are outside and there is a show, you can ask the girl, hey, excuse me, um, what's that show about? And then she's going to say, whatever. Maybe she's going to say, oh, yeah, they are from my university and they are there because they do this every week. And then you start engaging her. The conversation has started. Now, the thing is that I think most guys believe that the opener is the hardest part. No, the opener is extremely easy. What's harder is what you say after, because I can very well tell you, go up to this girl and tell her that you think she has a cool hat. That's easy. But what do you say after? That's the hard part. So don't overthink on the opener, okay? Most of the time, you're going to go up to a girl, you're going to approach her and say something. She's going to forget by the time you're five minutes in the conversation, what was the first thing that you said? And it's also very hard to fuck it up because the first thing that you say doesn't mean 
anything in itself. Most of the time, girls won't even hear it right or they won't understand. So the thing that matters is what comes after. Now, you will have to justify what you just said. Uh, especially so if you are a very big guy and girls tend to be um, scared a little bit when you approach them. Because you have to put yourself in the girl's shoes. You go up to a stranger on the street and she's there, she's small, she's cute, she's a girl, she's just minding her own business. And there's this huge dude who's coming up to her and was saying something. Many girls will get a little bit startled by that. Not because you fucked it up, but just because of the situation. And because the situation was unexpected, you have to address that. You have to address the fact that they are a little bit startled by the fact that this interaction is quite random, actually. Very easy. Oh, yeah, I know it's a little bit weird, but yeah, I still wanted to say hi. And now she knows what's going on. She understands that you understand that she was a little bit startled. And then it's less weird. You just acknowledge the situation. So that might be one thing if she got startled. Now, maybe she just didn't understand the thing that you said. You will have to justify it. Because let's say you go up to a girl and you're like, hey, I really like your hair, wow. And she's gonna be like, what? Then you justify what you just said. Yeah, of course, I don't see girls with blue hair often. Are you a student there? Justified what you just said. Now it makes more sense. And I know the fact that you have to justify seems a little bit odd, but that's because you're a guy and you know why you're approaching her. But you really have to put yourself in her shoes and understand that she's there and she is really randomly approached by someone. She has no idea what's going on. So you have to give her some context. You have to give her some time on what's happening so she can, let's say, adjust to the situation. All right, that's for the justification. Now for the conversation. You said something, uh, you justified it, so she doesn't think it's weird for you to say that. You're in a conversation with her. What are you going to talk about? Immediately after you justify what you just said, you're going to ask her something about herself. Um, it has to make sense, okay? If you open her in, a, let's say, in a, in a pizza place, if you open a girl in a pizza place, well, it makes sense if you start talking about pizzas. If you open a girl in a museum, if the thing that you ask her immediately after uh, opening her is about pizzas, it doesn't make sense, okay? If you open a girl in a pizzeria, in a pizza shop, and you tell her, so what's your favorite kind of pizza? It makes sense. If you open a girl in a museum and you're like, oh yeah, um, you look like an artist. Yeah, because we are in a museum and you have the style of an artist. By the way, do you like pizza? It doesn't make any sense. Now, instead of talking about pizzas in the museum situation, you could talk about the fact that maybe she's an art student. So you could ask her about that. And then it's coherent with the rest of the interaction, with the context, with the world situation. And the, the key there is that at the beginning of the interaction, you just want to make it not interesting, but understandable and relatable. If you're weird, it's bad. If you're not interesting, it's not bad. We don't want to be interesting by what we say. We want to be relatable enough for her to open up, for her to be, to be more comfortable uh, with the fact she's talking with a stranger. So um, there are a lot of things to say about conversations. Learning conversation is a true skill quite complex. We're not going to go over that just yet today. But what you want to do right after you start asking her questions is to vibe. Okay. What do I mean by vibe is that you're going to keep the conversation and you're going to bounce on whatever you guys are, are talking about. Make sure it's coherent. Again, the biggest mistake I see when it comes to conversations are guys going like topic A, topic B, topic C, topic D, it feels weird and robotic. It feels, it feels like a police interrogation. What's more natural to do will be topic A, topic B, 
get back to topic A, talk about topic C, but talk a little bit about topic B, B and A, then talk about topic D. This is how friends talk. That makes more sense, that feels more natural. Again, if you just talk about topic A, B, C, D, it feels really weird, it feels really robotic. The girl is gonna feel uncomfortable, she's gonna see you're nervous, and she's not gonna feel good about the interaction. If she doesn't feel good about the interaction, she's not gonna call you back. Even if she gives you her number, if she doesn't feel good about the interaction, she's not gonna want to have a second interaction just like that with you. Because again, a girl just knows what you can show. And if what you can show is an awkward time, between you and her, she's not gonna want to have that again. She's not gonna guess that maybe you're an amazing guy. She's gonna guess you're exactly like the guy she met on that first interaction. So if it's great, she's gonna assume you're a great guy. If she feels awkward, she's gonna assume you're an awkward guy to be with. Very important. Try to have this phase last as long as possible, okay? Because um, the more she believes that you're an amazing guy, the more she knows, the more she sees that you're an amazing guy, the more she will want to see you again. If you have a one hour interaction and for the whole hour she sees that you're amazing, she's definitely gonna want to see you again. If she sees you only for 10 minutes, well, you might be amazing for 10 minutes, but that's a, a sample that's too small. So we want to give her a big sample of what it's like to be with you. Because when you meet a girl, you are already on a first date with that girl. Now, that's my next point. You're in a conversation with that girl. If you have time, if she has time, you can invite her on a more proper date. Let's say, for example, you're going to go get an ice cream with her. Um, you have been talking with this girl for five minutes. You just you just stopped her on the streets. You have been talking for five minutes. You're going to tell her, oh, hey, well, do you have some time? Because I do have some time. There is a nice ice cream place there. Let's just go take an ice cream together. She's going to say yes if she has time and she wants to continue the interaction. That's what we call an instant date. When you meet a girl during day game and you directly go into a proper date, you are already on a first date. It's as easy as that. You had a nice conversation, she didn't feel weird about it, and you kept the conversation going. You don't need to do any fancy, smenchy stuff. Just have a nice conversation. If you're confident, if through the conversation you're able to show that you have an interesting life and an interesting lifestyle, she's gonna like you and be attracted to you. So to display that you're actually attractive, the only thing that you need to proactively be doing is to make sure you put yourself in the conversation for as long as possible. Then will come the time to close. It's when either one of you has to leave, you will take her contact. Not her. You take her contact. You don't let her take your number in the prospect that she's gonna call you later, okay? Girls don't do it. Just girls don't do it. Maybe she really likes you on the moment of meeting you. Maybe she really wants to see you again. But, um, you know, girls are busy and girls are, let's say, fickle in the sense that whatever she feels and whatever she wants and whatever she believes reality is it's really tied to whatever she feels at that time so if she feels great when she gives you the phone number and when um she when she actually takes your phone number if her emotional state changes by the time she has to send you a text it's not that she won't want it anymore it's just that it's going to be so far away from her focus from her emotional focus that she just won't do it she might but most of the time she won't. So to make sure that things go smoothly, you take her number. Even if she is telling you that she wants to take it herself, you insist and you are the one who is taking the number. Very easy to do. Um, when it happens to me, I'm just gonna be like, no, I am the guy, I have to take your number. And then if she insists, you can literally tell her, well, you know, girls are usually very busy and usually they don't call back the guys even if they get the number. You know why? Because girls don't usually take the initiative. And then she's probably going to say, oh yeah, right. Well, that's right. And then you take her number. Don't let her go with your number. 
Okay, now you take the Instagram only if you are really active there. If you have an average Instagram profile, you don't really want to try to game there. But if you have a great Instagram profile, well, it's going to play in your favor. Most of the time you want to take her phone number though. What you want to do at the time of closing as well is when you figured that you gotta go or she has to go, it's better if you have time to do so to set up another date directly. So that it makes more sense that you're gonna call her to well figure out exactly how you guys meet again. It just makes more sense to plan a second date uh, during the first time that you meet her. All right, that's it for day game. Now let's talk about night game a little bit. When I say night game, it's basically any kind of party. Parties usually happen during the night. So most of the time night game is going to be uh, bars and clubs and private parties. So I don't recommend that you drink, but it's a party, so have fun your way, okay? I'm the first one to say, well, it's a party, we are here to meet girls, but come on, it's a party, let's have fun, let's share a beer with the boys. But it's true that you don't want to get drunk, okay? Because when you get drunk, um, you, you just become more courageous. And then if you rely on alcohol to get results with girls... It just means that without alcohol, you can't talk to a girl, which is quite sad. The point of this is to make sure that you can meet girls all the time. If you can only meet girls when you drink, well, that's going to be quite random and that's going to be quite expensive in the long run. Plus, you will meet less girls. Okay, so the thing about night game, the thing about parties is that alcohol and loud music make it very chaotic. So I'm going to give you again a rough plan of the steps that you have to follow, but um, in a lot of times you won't be able to follow those steps exactly because it's very chaotic. Let's say, for example, you met a girl and she really likes you and you really like her, but maybe there is one of the friends who's throwing up, so the girl has to go there. Maybe you meet a girl and you guys like each other's, but there is the ugly friend who is trying to cock block you because she doesn't want to go home alone. So she's a little bit jealous. She's going to pull her friend by the hand. And like She's going to go away from you. And that's so funny because that happened to me once. I was talking to a girl and she really liked me. And her friend was there and her friend was jealous because she wanted attention. So I was talking to the girl and I was holding her hand and um, the friend took her other hand. And that was so funny because at, at that point we were just like me on her right hand and the friend on her left hand. And we were pulling to see who would go with the girl. That happens sometimes, okay? So here is a plan that you should follow most of the time, but very often you will have to improvise. That being said, First, you will have to approach again. Uh, you want to open with anything, okay? That's a party, so you can be a little bit less relatable. The main point of a party, the main reason why people go to a party is to have fun and relax and chill. You will meet some girls who go to clubs and never laugh and never smile. They are probably not girls that you want to get along with. Because, again, the point of a party is to be fun. You will be seen as more attractive if you're fun and loud in a party. Now, you don't have to, but that works better. We're going to see that in a second. So, you can approach girls with pretty much anything in a party environment. The more fun, the better. Because, again, most girls come there for the fun. You want to keep the fun and you want to keep approaching, okay, all throughout the night. Because uh, you are going to keep starting conversations and generally being interesting and fun up to at least midnight. You're not going to sleep with a girl before midnight most of the time. And if you do, she's probably not going to be super attractive. Uh, let's be honest. A girl who goes with a guy... Let me rephrase. A girl who spends hours making up and going to the club to go home with a guy in five minutes is probably a girl who's out of options or a girl who's really horny. But again, even a girl who's really horny, if she's hot, she has many options. So girls that you will sleep with early in the night are usually not that hot. They are usually not that interesting. That's why before midnight, you can consider that you warm up. You talk to as many people as possible. You try to, well, make sure everyone sees you and make sure you've approached everyone. 
And by that time, by midnight, you will have a good idea of who thinks you're attractive, which girls like you, which girls liked the interaction with you, which girls didn't like you, which girls you actually like to maybe approach again. By midnight, you want to be physical first. By midnight, this is the time when you will turn into a shark. This is the time where you will try to be physical fast with girls to screen out, let's say, girls who are not into you and girls who are not looking to fuck with a guy that night. Uh, basically, you want to screen girls who are down to have sex with you. Ideally, you approached, again, a lot so far and you've seen girls show you signs of interest. You're going to focus on those girls who are interested in you. You're going to screen for her compliance by touching her. You can touch her in many different ways, okay? You can pull her hand and make her spin. You can dance with her. You can grind on her. You can hug her. See which girls react well to that. If she reacts well to that, well, it's a sign that you can make things more intimate. You're going to try to isolate her. Now, I don't really like the term isolation because it's a little bit predatory, but you get my point. You're going to get some one-on-one -on -one, um, intimate time with her. You're still in the venue, okay, but you're in a place where it's a little bit more intimate and not everyone is watching you as much as if you were still in the middle of the dance floor. Now you're going to invite her in that place, which is a place that's more intimate in the venue, uh, be it the smoking area, be it the hallway, be it a table with dim lights, basically a place where you can be physically close to her and ideally talk with her. Now, when you're there, you want to keep the conversation going. You want to keep it going for a bit and you want to try to kiss her. Uh, you want to keep sharing the fun, even if you kiss her, okay? Even if a girl is, let's say, committing to you by kissing you and by spending one-on-one -on -one time with you, it doesn't mean this is the right and perfect time to try everything. It doesn't mean it's a done deal just yet. Now, you don't always have to kiss girls in clubs. I would say at a higher level, you never want to be doing it. But when you're learning this and when you're basically looking to have as much sex as fast as possible, that's what you want to do. Now, if she doesn't comply, well, that's very easy. If she doesn't want to kiss you, if she doesn't want to be intimate with you, if she doesn't want you to touch her, it's very easy. You go to the next girl. The good thing with clubs and the good thing with night game in general is that there are a lot of pretty girls going there. <clears throat> now, let's talk about pooling. How do we bring those girls back to a place where we can have sex? When the club closes or earlier, if you feel the girl really likes you, and she really wants to have sex, you can tell her to come check out this amazing thing back at your place. Now, sometimes again, you will pull um, the first girl you talk to in five minutes, and sometimes you will pull in the club's bathroom. I told you earlier, it's very chaotic. Uh, you have to go with the flow, okay? You have to be ready to adapt. You can try to pull girls before midnight, but uh, those girls will usually be uglier and less interesting. That's what I talked about before. Now, um, a funny thing as well, I really love to go out at clubs. Uh, that's my favorite venue to meet girls. And I as well feel a little bit upset when I go out to practice social dynamics. I, I go out to practice meeting girls and I go to a club and the first girl I approach, she's down to have sex with me and she's down to go home with me which is kind of a bummer because I couldn't practice anything. And if you go out a lot, you will notice that as well. That's kind of frustrating when you spend your time preparing yourself, um, choosing your clothes, preparing yourself mentally, taking a taxi to go to the venue. And in the first five minutes, you find a girl who wants to sleep with you. It's a little bit of, not a waste, but you get my, my points. There is a little bit of frustration there. Now, for the clothes, well, you will um, try to have sex with that girl, but if you can't and you still feel she likes you, you will take her contact to see her again, to add her to the system. Now, some important notes about night game. Pre-selection plays a huge role. 
If you have hot girls around you, you're gonna be considered extremely attractive in the venue. Everything is about perceived value, even more so in nightclubs. Fun plays a huge role as well. Most girls, most people in general, go to clubs and to party places, well, to party. So you will have an easier time engaging and attracting girls you're talking to if you're fun. Now, not everyone goes there for fun, and not every guy likes to be allowed, but it's just easier there. This is the um, fun venue. If you're not loud, you still can work around that, but it's better to go somewhere else if you don't like it. Now, personally, I really like clubs because this is the kind of venues where you have the, the, the biggest amount of hot girls who dressed well and sexy, especially to go to the party. If you're more of a quiet guy, you should focus on meeting girls in the smoking areas, uh, in the quieter parts of the clubs. <clears throat> okay, let's talk a little bit about social circle game now. The key about social circle game is to create an army of people who like you and want to please you. Your default state has to be giving value. It's the whole idea that if you're an amazing person, people will want to be around you. If you always give value, people will want to be around you because maybe you're going to give value to them. And most likely you are giving value to the people around you. And that's why they stay around you. So your default state has to be giving value. Now, what does that mean? I know the concept of value is quite um, blur. Uh, it's quite blurry. Basically, value is anything that can make people's life easier or more enjoyable. But value is subjective, okay? If you give me a box of chocolates, maybe I don't like chocolates and I don't find value in chocolates. But if you give a box of chocolates to someone else, maybe they love chocolates and they find value in those chocolates. And therefore, they will find value in you because you're the person giving value, you're the person giving chocolate. So value is really subjective to the person who is receiving it. Now, there are a few things that everyone finds valuable. Uh, most people like fun. Most people like to talk about themselves. Most people like to feel good about themselves. So if you can go up to strangers and strike a conversation and be fun and make them talk about themselves and make them feel good about themselves, they are going to love you for that. And that's not very complicated, okay? Um, you have to learn some uh, conversation skills to do so. You have to learn how to properly engage with people. But that's not really hard to do. That's very easy to learn at the very least for the basics of uh, conversation making. That being said, you want to befriend everyone you meet. If you want to constitute yourself an army, you have to meet people and add them to the army. So uh, a few key points there. You want to be polite with everyone that you meet. You want to engage in small talk instead of talking to no one. Okay. Now, you don't have to be nice to everyone, but you have to be courteous and polite to everyone that you meet. And uh, it's always better to be talking to someone than to not talk to anyone because you don't develop a relationship with someone that you are not talking to. If you talk to someone even for two minutes and you have a nice chit chat with them, they like you infinitely more than if you didn't talk with them. If you don't talk with them, you're transparent. We don't want to be transparent. You want to focus on making other talk about themselves so that you can find commonalities. Uh, the, the, the base of any friendship is commonalities. Uh, you like your gym buddies because you go to the gym together. You like your classmates because at first, at the core, you're in the same classroom. You like your workmates because at the core, you are doing the same job. Maybe then you figured out other things that you like about them. But at the core, friendship and relationships in general come from uh, commonalities, common points, common grounds. And to make friends, it's very easy. You're going to 
talk to someone until you find commonalities and then you're going to ask them out based on those commonalities. But you are going to see that right after. You also want to take the social media contact of everyone that you have a nice, pleasant chat with. You never know what can happen. Now, to have the proper army, uh, you want to surround yourself with the right people. To have your own army that serves you, you want to surround yourself with people that are right for you. You don't want to surround yourself with people that um, are not going to get you anything. And that might find superficial, but if you like music and you hang out with people who don't like music, those people technically don't serve your goal, which is to enjoy music. So that doesn't mean those people are bad people, but it means that you would fit better with people who have the same, uh, let's say, interests as you do. That's why it's important to find commonalities. Again, that's why it's uh, the base of any relationship. Now, um, if you want to meet models, for example, well, hang out with models and befriend models. If you want to meet entrepreneurs, do the same with entrepreneurs. Find and surround yourself with the right people. You know what they say, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you spend time with entrepreneurs, you're going to meet entrepreneurs and most likely you are an entrepreneur in some kind of way. If you uh, surround yourself with models, most likely you're going to find job opportunities in the model industry, be it being a photographer or being a promoter. Um, other than that, you want to hang out where your ideal or social circle already hangs out, okay? Because you can't meet models if you don't go to places where models hang out. For example, where do models hang out? They hang out in modeling agencies. They hang out um, in fashion cities like Paris. Uh, you meet models everywhere in Paris during the fashion week. Um, they are in the VIP sections of uh, interesting and high-end clubs. Uh, where are entrepreneurs, for example? They are at co, uh, co-working spaces, networking events. Basically, know where your crowd hangs out and hang out there. And then befriend people. Add them to your circle. Add them to your army. As well, you want to drop toxic relationships, okay? Anyone who's not helping you have a happier life, you want to drop them. All those people who are let's say, pulling you down, you want to drop them. And um, be it your family, be it your close friends from kindergarten, all of those people who don't help you live a happier life according to your own goals, all of those people, you want to drop them. I don't mean that you should, well, burn the bridges with all of those people. I have a very close friend that I know for a long time, but the thing is that He's extremely shy. So I hang out with this guy for sure and I'm having a great time. But now I don't hang out with this guy often. That's my point. Um, I'm not becoming a superficial uh, asshole and I don't want you to become a superficial asshole. But I am focused and I want you to be focused on your own results and improvement. And then finally, you want to take the lead and organize events uh, with all the interesting people that you meet. Because organizing events with interesting people is a great way to marry the fact that you're going to meet attractive women and that you're going to give value to interesting people who are going to give you a value back. So to organize those events, you want to invite the people you meet to go to the kind of places they already go to. You don't invite people who go to cocktail places to a salsa bar. And you don't invite a salsa, uh, a girl who goes to salsa bars all the time to an R&B place. Because it's going to make things way easier to invite people to places where they already go instead of convincing people to go to places where they don't go. Once you do this, you're going to set up events. Very easy. You take all of the people that you met from all of the um, lead acquisitions means that we saw before and you ask them to come to those events. It doesn't have to be your event, okay? You can invite people to a Taco Tuesday. You can invite people to a Pizza Monday. 
Doesn't matter. You can invite them to a nightclub. Doesn't matter if you're not the owner of the nightclub. The thing is that you are making the event happen. You are putting those people together. So then, therefore, it's your event. When you invite them, you tell them to come with someone. Oh, you're coming? Great. Invite your friends. The more, the merrier. And you tell them that. So now, if you go to a club with, uh, let's say, five girls, and each of those girls, you told them to bring their friends, well, maybe you will walk up in the club with 10 girls, and you will be the only guy. See how powerful this is? Who else is able to do this? What other guy is able to go inside a club with 10 girls around him? Now, when that happens, you do not want to wait on the girls at your events. Uh, you only want to try something after the event in private and only if they showed signs of interest, okay? Uh, officially, you're the friend of everyone at the event. Now, the thing is that if you're the leader of the event, uh, you have an insane amount of value, especially if you are one guy and there are 10 girls around. The preselection is so strong that girls will fight for your attention Girls will fight and show you signs of interest left and right. Now, to get to that level, to get those people to accept to go out to events with you, to get the people, to get those people to see that you are cool and that you're able to organize those events, you have to have a certain level, okay? Um, but it's very easy to organize, let's say, uh, Taco Tuesday, as I, as I said earlier. You invite three guys, you invite three girls, you tell them to come with their friends, and there you have it. You're the leader of the Taco Tuesday. Congratulations! You're now the leader of your social circle. Because once you're able to do this once, you can do this and you can make it a weekly thing. After a month, well, you have your new social circle and you are officially the leader of that social circle. Now, why is a social circle game so powerful. Well, it's instant pre-selection towards anyone who is out of the circle, okay? Um, especially if your circle has hot girls, because as I said, which guy is able to roll up to the club with 10 girls following him? No guy is able to do this. When you do this, you become a local celebrity. People know you and you don't know them yet, because you get noticed. Girls in your circle, they fight for your attention. If you have six girls and you're the only guy, well, it will feel like they are fighting for your attention. And because you know it, uh, women crave male attention. So if you have this amount of free selection, on top of being someone who gives value, on top of being someone who is fun to be around, on top of being someone who is able to organize events and make interesting people meet, of course, girls are going to be attracted to you and of course, girls are going to fight for your attention. Now, girls in the circle as well will introduce you to their hot friends. If you have, uh, let's say, a weekly event, if you have your Taco Tuesday going for two, three months, eventually some of the girls that you invite regularly, they will come with their friends, especially if that's a nice event and everyone is having fun and you give value. So um, the girls that you invite in your circle, they will want their other friends to um, enjoy those events as well. So basically you will have nothing to do and girls will throw their hot friends at you. Very powerful. As well, guys in your circle, they will they will share your sorry, they will share their connections with you. If you are friend with a guy and he really likes you because you're a very cool dude, giving a ton of value. If he has something that you like and you let him know, he's most likely gonna try to give that thing to you, and that's the whole value leverage thing. You give value to people and they give you a value back. That's extremely powerful. As well, guys outside of your circle, they will try well to befriend you because if you're one guy and you have 10 girls around you, all of the other guys in the room are jealous and they want to be your friend. You don't know those guys, but they are going to be nice to you. They want to be your friend. They want to... Um, 
They want you to share the value that you have because obviously if you're one and you have 10 girls around, you cannot be having sex with all of them. So those guys who are outside of the circle, they will try to be nice with you to enter the circle because your circle has value. The fun is happening there. The cool guys are in the circle. The hot girls are in the circle and people outside of the circle want a part of the cake as well. There you have it. Four steps. We've been through all of the lead acquisition means. It's not too hard, once again. You just approach and meet as many attractive girls as possible and you follow the system. You just follow the steps. If you follow the steps properly, you're gonna add those girls to the funnel. It's not complex, it's really simple. It doesn't mean that it's easy, but it's simple to understand and the steps are simple. Then you're gonna transition again to a date. You're gonna lead that date to sex and then you're gonna repeat until the girls enter in a relationship, until they enter the, ro the rotation with you. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about text game. It's called short message system for a reason. Your goal is to always lead to a date. If the conversation goes in any other direction, you address it quickly, but you get back on track. I do this in four steps that I'm gonna share with you right now. First, you want to be sending value. That's a very easy to do. You send something that is light, fun, and that doesn't require an answer, okay? That's it. Don't try to send this edgy thing that's going to get her to react. Don't. Ping her something, see how she reacts. And that's the thing, if your first interaction was amazing, she's most likely waiting for your text and she's gonna react and say something uh, great, something that's gonna show her interest. Maybe not, we're gonna see it later. We are not looking for her to show signs of interest. We are just um, looking to go through the steps. But again, if the first interaction was great and she liked you, she's expecting your text and she's gonna be happy to reply to your text. So you don't have uh, to do anything crazy. You don't have to do something super entertaining. You don't really have to go out of your way. Uh, for example, last time I did this, I was sitting and my cat jumped on my lap. I just took a picture of the cat and I sent it to a girl. That's light, that's fun, that doesn't require an answer. And most girls like cats. Very easy. Second step, you're going to want to banter a bit. Now, again, we don't want to fall in the conversation and there it's uh, very close to what we saw about texting girls on online dating apps. You're going to use conversation, but only if you find it fun because you have a joke to tell her and you really find it fun or because you need information to screen her or you need information to make a date happen. But you're not going to ask her what she ate for dinner if you don't care because most likely you don't care and she doesn't care either. So ideally, um, she knows that you will text her to set up a date. Uh, that's what we saw earlier. When you approach a girl in real life, at the end, when you guys have to part ways, it's better right before that to um, talk about another date, to set up another date. So when you text her, she knows why you're texting her, basically. Um, but if that wasn't clear while you're talking to her, you have to make her talk about herself and tease her until she gives you a sign of interest. Again, you don't have to make her like you. You just have to make her show that she likes you to justify the fact that you ask her on a date. If she doesn't like you, she's not gonna show interest, but if she likes you, she's gonna show interest. And that's what we wanna figure out, okay? Nothing that you might ever text her is gonna change her mind positively about you. Of course, you can fuck up and say weird shit and then she thinks you're weird and she doesn't like you anymore. But nothing that you might say 
through texts is going to make her like you more. If she doesn't like you, whatever you text her, she's not going to like you more. I hope that makes sense. It's very important. Anyways, um, step two, as I told you, you're going to lead the conversation and you're going to figure out how you can make a date happen. Um, so far, so good. Step three, you're going to push for a date. Uh, you're going to suggest that you guys should be doing something. See how she reacts. For example, you text her and you're asking her if she's an art student and she's telling you that she goes to this uh, art school. And then you reply, oh, that's great. I will be in the area on Wednesday. We should get a coffee together. See how she reply. She's going to say yes. She's going to say no. Or she's going to ghost. Again, ghosting means no. So she's either going to be uh, to give you a positive and confirm or she's going to give you a negative. If she gives you a positive, you go to the next step, which is step four. You're going to lock down the date. You're going to be assertive and precise, okay? You're not going to be like, let me know if you want. Maybe we can do this during the week. That's not assertive at all. We don't want to do this. You're going to be assertive. Okay, great. I will be around. Let's do this on Wednesday at five. Assertive presses. Her only answer has to be yes or no. Well, technically, it's going to be a yes or a ghost. But if she agreed on the uh, principle of a date, she's not going to say no when you lock down uh, the logistics of the date. Maybe she's going to give you objections. Maybe she's going to say, oh, I can't at five. That's easy. You deal with the objection. Okay, that's great. Let's do it the next day. Done. Now, what if she ghosted you? Uh, maybe, she, maybe something happened. Maybe she doesn't like you. In any case, it's always better to assume that she likes you and that she ghosted you because she can't. It's never going to be to your advantage to assume that she's not interested. So you always assume that she is interested. So if she ghosts you, you're just going to wait a few days and you're going to try all of those four steps in the future, a few days later. That's it for the text, gay. Now you're going to transition to a meetup. What do we do on a first date? Okay, the key there is that if a girl goes on a first date with you, it's because she likes you already. You don't have to do anything amazing. If she's on a date with you, she likes you and she needs to be more comfortable before entering in a relationship. A girl who's not attracted to you is not going to guess and take the risk to go on a date with you. Of course, once you're on a date, you can fuck it up. But... If you're on a date, she likes you, at least at the beginning. Now, some girls are horny and sometimes you will skip the public dates, as I said earlier in the video. Some girls are very horny, but most girls, for most girls, the date is going to happen in a public place. Now, the point of a date is to have the girl be comfortable enough with you to have sex again. Uh, if she is there, she likes you. And unless... You made a big mistake and she thinks it's a friendly hangout. But so far, so good. She likes you. She knows what's going on. She knows you guys are both on a date to get to know each other and figure out if a relationship can come out of this. A relationship or sex. Maybe she's horny again. So what you're going to do, first you're going to get into the venue. I recommend that you um, have your first dates in a place that's nearby your house in a bar. That's the standard date. That's very easy. You do not want to rush anything just yet. You want to get to know her. You want to start talking about superficial topics first. That's very important, okay? When a girl comes on the date, you're not going to start by, so what do you think is the meaning of life? Do you think we are alone in the universe? You're not going to start with that, okay? Very superficial at the beginning. Hey, how are you? So, you're not too cold? Yeah, it's cool those days. I see you have a big jacket. Yeah, my sister has the same. Yeah, anyways, not too much traffic on the way here. I see, very superficial, very basic at the beginning. And then the more, let's say, personal details she gives you when you're being superficial, the more you're going to be able to dig. And the more you dig, the more details she's going to give you and the more you will be able to dig again. But at the beginning, 
you go superficial. Let's say at the beginning you go wide and then you go more and more precise to get to know her intimately. What you're going to do after, you're going to bounce to another venue. You don't always have to, but the thing is that the human brain feels more comfortable with someone that you've seen in different settings. So let's say it's better to see a girl two hours, um, let's say in a BBQ place, and then two hours in a bar, than to see a girl's five hour in a bar. Than to see a girl five hours in a bar. Her brain is going to feel just more comfortable about you because she saw you in more um, different settings. Just psychological trick to make people feel more comfortable about you. Try to move to another venue at least once. Then you want to be physical, okay? It's very important that you're physical on your first dates. Uh, it's important for her to be at ease with your touch, okay? If you start touching her when you're back to your place, it's going to feel sudden. It's not going to feel organic. It's going to feel forced. And if anything feels forced and not normal, she's going to feel uncomfortable. And if she feels uncomfortable, you're going to have more trouble having sex with her. Because again, the point of a date is to make her feel comfortable about the idea of having sex with you. If you make her uncomfortable just before you're able to have sex with her, this is going to be very hard for you to continue and move on. Now, how are we physical the right way? So we call that the Kino escalation. Basically, you want to go from the least intimate to the most intimate place to touch her. First, what's not intimate? Well, the forearms. Then you have the hands and shoulders. Then you have the back and legs. Then you have the belly, though I'm not sure why you would like to touch a girl's belly. Then you have the neck and the face. By the point you're able to touch a girl's face, she's probably ready to get kissed. Okay, a little bit of sound, someone's calling me. If she pulls back, you pull back and you try again 10 minutes later. It's not because she's not comfortable at first with your touch that she's not going to be comfortable with your touch 30 minutes later. That's so funny. I have some friends and what they like to do is to sleep with girls as fast as possible. And that's so funny when they tell the stories. Sometimes they meet a girl and they, talk, they walk with those girls on the streets and they try to be physical as fast as possible. So they take the hands of those girls in the streets. But at the beginning, the girl is not comfortable holding hands with a total stranger. And then that's funny because, because they do the, the escalation, right? 30 minutes later, they are having sex. So I find it interesting when I tell the story how this girl who would not want to hold hands 30 minutes before is actually having sex with a guy 30 minutes later. But that's because if you do this the right way, if you escalate the right way, it just feels natural. It doesn't feel forced. That's what you want to do to make the girl comfortable fast with you. Now, how do we bring her back to our place? Well, first, you don't necessarily have to bring a girl back to your place to have sex with her. I've done that in so many public places. But, gonna be honest with you, it's more comfortable to do that in a bed. Now, ideally, you seeded the pool before. What does seeding the pool mean? Seeding the pool means that during the date, you talked about this amazing thing that you guys can do at your place. And then you change the topic. At the end of the date, you're going to bring up again this amazing thing that you guys can do at your place. And you're going to ask her to come and check it out. Now, if you didn't do this, well, you're still going to have to ask her to come back to your place. Uh, this is why you see in movies the awkward, so do you want to come upstairs for our last drink? And that's not optimal, okay? That's very awkward. But if you don't have the choice, well, you still have to invite her to your place to do anything. Just don't bluntly tell her, oh, yeah, let's go upstairs and have sex. Because I've done that. Some girls react well. Most girls don't react well to this. So just find a good reason to have her come back to your place. Now, it's not magic spell, okay? Some will say no. Some girls don't like to have sex on the first date. But if you follow uh, those steps, 
you will try your best shot. That's it for the date. A date is supposed to lead to sex. Now, again, that's not going to happen all the time on the first date. But then you just have a second date and you try to lead to sex. Then you have sex. We are not going to talk about sex. I suppose you know how to do it. Then, how do we transform that into a relationship? Very easy. You just do it again. Text. You set up a date. Then you have sex. Then you text. Then you set up a date. Then you have sex. The more you do this, the more comfortable she's going to feel about you. And the closer she's going to feel uh, to you. Then you just naturally add her to your life. You naturally add her to the rotation of girls that you're seeing. Or again, you make her your exclusive girlfriend if that's what you want. Okay, my computer is getting crazy. After the first date, text game should become a walk in the park, okay? She likes you already. Now you know it. You had the proof and confirmation. You guys had sex. She likes you. If a second date doesn't happen, though, it's because there is something that she didn't like on the first date or that happened outside of your control. Uh, maybe her ex came back, for example. But I really do believe that no girl is ever just looking for a hookup. Okay, as long as she has a good and a great time with you, she's going to want more of it. That just makes sense. Like if you keep giving value and there are no downsides to the fact that she sees you, why would she not want to see you again? Though, if a girl doesn't want to see you again, it's because she doesn't see a future with you. Whatever the type of relationship you have, by the way. Now, why would she not see a future with you? Let's troubleshoot why you don't get a second date. You have to find what you did wrong, okay? Maybe you displayed an attractive personality trait. Maybe you were childish, needy, close-minded. Maybe you judged her. Uh, what else? Maybe you, you ate her food when she was sleeping. Basically, anything that you're going to do that's going to take value. Maybe you have a questionable hygiene. Maybe you have a very messy apartment. And that's definitely true for girls. Uh, that happened to me. I went to a girl's house and her apartment was so fucking dirty. Uh, even if the sex was great, I never called her again because I couldn't see my, myself going back to that dirty place. And then I just felt dirty having sex with a girl who lives in such a dirty place. Anyways, using can lines as well and pickup techniques. Um, again, I don't want to talk too much about inner game stuff, but... If you're not able to uh, be naturally confident and be uh, bring your best self out there without using lines that you read on the internet, girls won't stay in the long run. And those who do are going to be girls who don't have very high standards. So inner game plays a huge role in having great relationships. Now, how do we move girls down the funnel that we saw earlier? How do we do that through the week while still having a life? Every girl that you're going to add to the funnel is going to have um, a low priority. Then you're going to move her through the funnel. Text game, setting up a date, having a date, having sex. And if you had a great time with her, you repeat that. And every lap she does in the circle, she, she's going to have a higher priority. Every time she uh, ghosts you, every time you can't move her down the funnel, you're going to go back at the beginning and you're going to lower her priority. In the end, girls that you uh, see the most, you're going to give them a high priority. And girls who ghost you are going to have a very low priority. Because in the end, you're going to meet a lot of girls, okay? You're going to meet a lot of girls and you're going to have to prioritize some girls. If you get 20 new numbers per week, you can't have 20 dates. So you're going to have, you're going to, have to assign them a priority. Now, I recommend that you give girls who seem to like you the most a higher priority. And I recommend that you set up dates first with girls who show you great interest. 
Now, how do we deal with this throughout the day? Because you can very well have three dates a day. Um, you are going to set up dates earlier in the day with girls who seem uh, to be more conservative. Girls who don't feel like you can have sex with on the on the first date, you're gonna put them earlier during the day, and maybe you're gonna have just a one hour coffee with that girl to then leave her and go on a date with that other girl who seemed very naughty and that other girl who seemed like she could have potentially sex on the first date. Uh, I recommend that you see girls who are already in the rotation at least once every 10 days. Um, that's the spinning plates theory. If you stop spinning your plates, well, they fall. And if you don't see a girl, she's going to lose all of her interest for you. Uh, and again, girls who ignore you or girls who can't or refuse to meet up, you lower their priority. It doesn't mean that you next them forever, but you lower their priority and you put them back at the beginning of the funnel, at the top of the funnel. Now, what do you need to make this work? You need to go out and approach a lot of women. Um, maybe you're approaching women in your day-to-day -day life. Maybe Monday you went to work and in the morning you talked to a girl. Maybe Wednesday in the subway you said hi to another girl. And maybe on the weekend you approached two girls when you went to the club. That's not enough. That's definitely not enough. The first time I looked up online how to get better with girls, I was 15. And I didn't start really approaching women and making proper use of this system until I was 23. And this is when my results really skyrocketed. Um, I was not stranger to the whole success with women thing. And then one day I met a guy and I went out with this guy and we were walking down the street for like two hours, two, three hours. And in those two, three hours, this guy just approached over 20 girls. I was mind blown and I was like, damn, it's actually possible to meet that many girls in such a little time. So your results are going to be directly tied to how many girls you approach. Again, you don't need to be very good at this to sleep with one new girl a week. Approach a lot. You will get better faster and you will sleep with way more girls and you will have, um, let's say, a way wider choice. You need to put in the work as well, okay? Watching this video is great. The next best thing that you can do is to close your computer, uh, turn off your computer and go out and approach girls. You cannot get better at this if you stay home, okay? You have to go out and take action. You need to get proper online dating pictures as well. Uh, we live uh, in, um, let's say we are in 2020. Uh, this is soon 2021. So don't be a boomer, okay? Live with your time. Be a modern person. Be a modern love gangster. Online dating is a huge part of dating now. You cannot anymore say that you don't care about online dating because if you understand the rules and you play by the rules, it's so easy to meet women. Like literally half of the women I sleep with, I meet them from online dating. From my house, just swiping on my phone. Don't even have to go out to meet women from online dating. Get proper pictures, okay? Half of your leads will come from dating apps. Uh, you need to adapt if you're not already on dating apps. And if you think dating apps are pointless, it's probably because you're not playing by the rules. Make an extra effort on getting those pictures right, okay? Uh, I don't care what your situation is. If you're not getting results from online dating, it's probably because you're not playing by the rules. I don't care how specific your situation. I don't care where you live. I don't care anything about your life. I don't care what race you're from. I don't care what country you come from. I don't care what language you speak, what language you speak. All of those are excuses, okay? Um, part of my work is to manage guys' Tinder. I've worked with over 100 people so far. I've seen everything. Everything can work if you play by the rules. So learn, understand the rules, and play by the rules. Get your pictures right. You can hire a professional for um, a Tinder photo shoot. It's very trendy those days. Do it if you need, and get those pictures right. I think 
uh, Tinder photo shoot must be like 60 to 80 dollars, really, if you can't take pictures yourself. So it's not that hard. Get it done right. As well, you want to maintain basic grooming habits. Make sure you shower at least once a day, your body and your hair. Brush your teeth three times a day. Wear fresh, clean clothes every time when out of the shower. I'm not your mom, but I feel like this has to be said. Make sure you don't have an bra and cut your nails cleanly at least twice a month. Grow a beard, or if you, not, if you have an uneven beard like me, shave at least twice a week, okay? That's very important. Getting your grooming and your fashion style right can get you easily at least at a 7 out of 10 level in the looks department. Get this right. So then work on your fashion style, okay? You can do all of that in one, two or three afternoons. And so uh, block one afternoon to look at male fashion blogs. Find styles that, that you like. Take notes and copy those styles. For example, if you like the skater boy style, take notes the next day, you block another afternoon and you go to the mall. It doesn't take that much time, okay? One afternoon to figure out what you like, one afternoon to buy it. You don't have to come up with a crazy style. You see what you like and you copy it. Then you want to put yourself in a situation where you can actually make use of this system, okay? Because it's all good and it's all amazing and you can get so many girls in your life and you can get so much smoother and you can get so much better at meeting girls. But if you live in your mom's basement, you're not gonna bring back girls there. If you're unemployed and you live at home with mom and dad, you need to fix this first and foremost, okay? Not chicks, life situation, First, find a job at McDonald's if you have to, and I mean it. Uh, while you're there, you are going to use one third of your salary for your rent and the rest to work on yourself to develop other skills that can help you find a better job and get a better life. But working, uh, working a very shitty job is better than doing nothing and being unemployed. And it's a starting point, okay? You don't have to do that for the rest of your life. The thing is that Whatever your situation is, you have to handle it first. Once you have a home of yours and a stable income, then you can focus on getting better with girls. But if you don't have a place to bring back, uh, to bring girls back to, or if you don't have a stable income to pay the taxi, to go to the clubs, to uh, basically sustain yourself, you're not gonna, let's say you're not in the best place to learn uh, social dynamics. You're not in the best place to learn game. There are more important things than to get good with girls. If you don't have enough money to feed yourself, you should not be focusing on fucking girls. And I'm talking about inner game again. I said I wouldn't do it today, so let's move on. Oh well, that's pretty much it. I left the most advanced concepts out for the sake of clarity, okay? Um, I I'd need a video that would be like five times longer if I would go into details regarding everything. There are a lot of subtleties. There are a lot of nuances. So for all of those subtleties, you can read my blog. This month, especially this month, I wrote a lot. Um, my challenge this month was to write one blog article every day. I think so far we are like the 29th of this month and I wrote 20 blog articles. Pretty, pretty good. I'd say those articles are amazing. Definitely go read them on my blog you will learn a lot. Um, I usually write blog articles about more advanced topics, things that are hard to explain through a video, okay? Then you can watch my other YouTube video if you're interested. I didn't release any video in a while, actually, because I'm back to France and uh, we are currently under lockdown, so I'm not even allowed to leave house to go meet girls in the streets. We're not even allowed to be outside and everything is closed. Hopefully, by the beginning of next year, I will be able to travel again and I will give you guys a lot of new videos with infields. The point of the YouTube channel was to show you in real life how to do things. 
while the point of the website and the blog is to explain you guys how to do things. That being said, I think this video is going to be really useful to you again in giving you, um, let's say, an overview of the system that you should be using to maximizing your results with girls. I hope that was useful to you guys. Leave a like, subscribe. Tell me what you think about this video in the comments, if that was useful to you. And I will see you next time.